Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. And we sing. <laughs> Everybody, how are you? I'm Alex Bennett, and this here is the uh, is the ramble, uh, and it goes on until midnight Eastern time in the United States of America. Uh, that would be on the uh, East Coast of the United States. So no matter, no matter where you are in this world of ours, just accommodate for that, and you can tell whether we're live or not. If not, it's a recording, but that's fine too. We run all our programming 24/7 on our on our so-called network. Um, so tonight I have no guest, okay? It's just me and you and uh, me blabbing for maybe the next uh, 25 minutes or so. I may have nothing to say, in which case, uh, fuck all y'all, you know? Here, here's something I'm, I was thinking of, though. See, over here on a monitor that I have here, uh, I, I have the, uh, the actual video that's running and how it's going out to uh, uh, the people out there via YouTube. And, you know, i got to tell you something. Uh, I've watched this. We've been doing this, what, with YouTube for a month and a half or so, okay? And that particular thing has never fucked up. I'm, I'm telling you the truth, folks. It's never screwed up. Uh, I watch it, and it is solid as a rock. And that's what we love about, uh, about YouTube. Also, the fact that I can just click a button here and it starts the whole thing and you start getting it okay and that, that makes it fun too there's one other factor that we have that's very hard for me to pay attention to because here in front of me I've got the uh, the Skype screen along with the thing that makes me do the uh, the uh, TV called OBS um, um, open what is it? Open source broadcasting system, I think it's called. OBS Studio. It's free. If you want, ever want it and play with it, go get it online. I thoroughly recommend it. And that piece of stuff goes out uh, over, you know, to, sends it uh, to, the, to, to YouTube. And all of this is very smooth, but I have to watch this screen, okay? So... Uh, going over to this screen is uh, is a little bit more difficult, and it takes me away from looking at that screen. Well, when I've got a citizen panel on, we're fine. But what I don't get to see, and and uh, it is a very important part of our feed, is the fact that there is a chat room. Okay, and uh, you can add your discussion to the chat room. People are chatting all the time. We have uh, Renee's on there right now. Mike is on there right now. Uh, uh, Roku, okay, thank you. And he, uh, Roku says, a uh, great hat, Alex. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, Renee is saying, aloha to Roku. I like... Uh, his China hat, too. No, this is not my... Chi oh, two. Oh, the other one. The one that's with the star on it. The uh, Red Army cap. Yeah, I like that cap. That's one. Of my, that's my favorite cap. I'd wear that outside, only some people might kill me for wearing it. So I, I don't. But anyway, so I've, I've got the chat room, and it's hard for me. People are having an ongoing discussion. And occasionally, I will see something, but it, it requires me to look over here. Okay? And... Uh, uh, sometimes I'm just not paying attention to that. I'm paying attention to the show that I'm doing. So what I thought I would do tonight is I have like 20 minutes right now, and I have nothing to talk about, absolutely nothing to talk about. So if you want to go on to that chat room, and by the way, if you're just listening to us with audio, you can go over to uh, gabnet.net, and the picture is running there. But wait a minute, the, uh, the chat room doesn't run there. That's right, the chat room doesn't run. Oh, well. Go, uh, go to, um, let's see here, youtube.com forward slash Bolo Bennett, B-O-L-O-B-E-N-N-E-T-T -T, forward slash live. And then you will get the page. And that's a page, by the way, you should bookmark because as long as that is, if every time you put on your, uh, your browser and stuff, it's there, it's there waiting, 
okay? In fact, if you go over there, it'll have a countdown till the next show and so on, and then when the show goes on, it automatically starts. So if you have it bookmarked, you don't even have to worry about it. But if you go to that, youtube.com forward slash Bolo Bennett, B-O-L-O-B-E-N-N-E-T-T, -E -E forward slash live, uh, you will then get to see the chat room, which uh, is running right now. And Renee says, hey, Ro, co, uh, call up and tell us how to pronounce your name. That's a, that would be a good idea. Thank you, Renee. I'm glad you said that. Uh, and she says, yes, the Red Army hat. Love that hat. Yeah, it's my, my favorite. Anyway, so I just thought since I have nothing to do, it says, take notice, Alex. Make sure to tell the people to turn their clock ahead on Saturday night. I didn't know we had to turn our clock ahead on Saturday night. Is it that time again? Didn't we just turn it back the other way? Now we're turning it the other way again? Oh, boy. You know, I, I'm so happy for electronics um, uh, it, it, because with the age of electronics, most of our clocks change themselves. If I leave this room, I come back the next morning, all the clocks on the computers are right. But there's always a clock somewhere that you forgot to turn, right? Uh, the microwave, you got to set that. I don't know of any microwaves that have, maybe they do now, uh, but microwaves usually don't have automatic. And I have a stove, that needs a clock change. And my Keurig um, coffee maker needs it. Let me see, is there anything else I need to do? Oh, yeah, there's a big clock we've had. A girlfriend went and got this big clock in the bedroom, a digital clock, a digital readout, and uh, it, it's there. And every year we have to change the time on that clock to go ahead or backward, okay? And that's cool, except for the fact that every year we forget how you do it with this damn thing because you got to push buttons and you got to it, it make, make lights flash and they make the next one. It's, it's, it's misery. That's, and then there's another difficult one in here. So there are about five, six clocks we got to do, even though none of them are automatic. And uh, uh, I'm glad I changed the clock radio, although there I just had to flip a switch to go from daylight to standard. Um, but, uh, and then the worst part is, is I keep writing the uh, 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 <laughs> standard time on my checks. No, uh, I, I keep then on the show here, I, it took me three months to get used to saying uh, Eastern Standard Time, and now I have to go back to saying Eastern Daylight Time. <laughs> Forget it. You know, it's all, it's all getting to be too much. Anyway, so, um, uh, but uh, thank you for reminding me of that. Now, what I thought I would do is, if you want to write something on this chat, ask me a question, something like that, uh, I can answer some of them. Uh, right now, and that would let me blow the next what 15 minutes before we go to the citizen panel. So that would be uh, that would be a lovely thing for you to do. Uh, let me also say, uh, if you're listening and you're watching, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, uh, people subscribing to it has slowed down because I stopped reminding people. But let me nudge you to go and tell all your friends, even if they don't want to watch it, just go to the Alex Bennett channel. Just put Alex Bennett in search in, uh, in uh, YouTube, and it'll take them uh, to a little picture of me in a circle. Click on that, and it takes you to something. On that page, it says subscribe. Just tell them to subscribe. Tell them they don't ever have to listen, okay? I don't care. Just subscribe, because if I get the numbers, uh, I get swell, give some prizes from YouTube. Um, but since I was late into this game, I should have, if I had been doing this while I was doing the radio thing, I'd have, you know, 5,000 by now. But because uh, everybody has forgotten where the hell Alex Bennett went, uh, you know, it changes. Let me take some pills here. I, I want to take a couple of uh, ibuprofen. My, uh, my leg is hurting me tonight. For some reason, so let me just take these. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Anyway, where am I? Okay, so uh, let me see if there are any questions. Oh, and please share this broadcast too. She adds, says Renee. Yes, you can share it. You can. There's a um, when you play it. There's a thing that says share, and you can share it to a friend's site or page or whatever. Just spread it around. Uh. Renee says, where can I get a China Star hat too? 
Uh, well, the same place I did, China. So that's where I bought it. I imagine you could find it somewhere here, but uh, I got mine when we were in China, along with the Obama as a red soldier shirt that I sometimes wear on the program here. Uh, Mike Wright says, Alex, is it still snowing in New York? No, that stopped uh, about uh, the middle of last night. And I didn't even go out today because it was just a slushy mess. You know, it was one of those snows that's just no fun because it's, it's, it, 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 it was just nothing but turning into nothing but slush. It wasn't warm. It wasn't cold enough to stick to the, to the ground in a snow-like form. So it uh, was one giant icy out there, one giant slurpy, you know, and I hate that because uh, it really makes. And then I walked in it, and it was snowing, and it was miserable. I have a video of it that, by the way, I posted. Let me tell you this, okay? So and we watch, we do these shows, right? And I get some people who are watch it while it's on, you know. And then I post it uh, to uh, YouTube, and I post it to my. What do you call channel? My uh, my Facebook page, um, and uh, oh, you know, on the Facebook page you get maybe uh, 80, 90 people who watch any given video any given day, and over on the other uh, hundred and some odd, you know, it's not a lot. So yesterday, because it was snowing like batshit out there, I figured I would go into the bedroom, turn the system on there and do a Facebook live of just a camera out the window watching the snow. Now it, nothing's happening that it didn't move. Snow was just coming down. That's all there was to it. All right. That was the picture. All right. As of right now, let me go and, uh, and, and, and check it. You're, you're not going to believe this, you know, and this begins to make me wonder if I'm doing the right thing here. Yeah. Right now, as of um, a little more than 24 hours later, 704 people watch the snow video. All right? <laughs> yes. I then went out into the snow. This is all on my Facebook page. And I, uh, I walked in. I didn't do this live. I just walked in the snow uh, as it was coming down to show people how miserable it was, right? It goes for about, I don't know, a minute and a half, two minutes. Uh, 311 views, right? Meanwhile, last night, Larry King, 89 views. You know, so um, here, here's what I'm wondering. Is it worth it to do these two hours every night, or should I just, like when it rains, just stick a, 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 a camera out the window and take a, a shot of that continually for two hours? And, and uh, I guess it'll get more viewers than this show gets. So I'm thinking of other things to do, like, uh, oh, maybe get a uh, bucket of paint and then uh, brush a wall and then put a camera on it and let you wa watch paint dry. Now, I may try that one day, just for the hell of it. I'll, I'll get something, to, like a canvas or something, and we'll put some paint on it, and then I will put the camera on it, and you can watch paint dry. It, it will be the paint dry channel. I'll bet it gets more people. I, I bet you it gets more people than are watching this show. All right? So uh, I don't know. I, what, what am I doing wrong? That's the question. I, I come in here for two hours. I try to be pithy and have a, a good commentary and an interesting kind of situation with the citizens panel, which hasn't been done in, in broadcasting before. And uh, uh, snow falling gets me 700 viewers all right so go figure and by the way when it was running i was up to like 400 viewers watching it while it was i don't know if they're just sitting there going huh wow yeah i i'm gonna you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna start a channel on youtube called the very slow channel and it's just gonna be nothing but slow stuff like watching paint dry as an example uh and um you know I, I, I think it could do very well, to be honest with you. Um, let's see here. It says, uh, 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 Rocco says, uh, well, wait a minute, it says, and it was a pretty ugly view of a nondescript brick building. Yes, that on top of it. Very good. I'm glad you brought that up, Renee. Um, uh, Roku, Rocco 
it should be Roku, shouldn't it? Roku says, if the paint is purple, I will consider watching. And Renee says, uh, I vote for the purple too. And Roku says, yay, China hats and purple paint. Do-da, do-da. Anyway, uh, Renee says, YouTube already has a slow-mo channel. No, I'm, this is not going to be a slow-mo channel. It's just going to be a slow channel. In other words, uh, maybe I'll put a camera on while I'm asleep. <laughs> you know, Andy Warhol did that, what, in the, in the, in the 60s. Uh, he was turning out these, these short films or long films, and he had one called Empire, which was a picture of the Empire State Building from, uh, I think, from dawn until dusk, or maybe from night, dusk until the next dawn, but it was 12 hours long, and it was just a static shot of the, of the and a film of the, um, of the uh, uh, Empire State Building. So then he did one, it was called Sleep. I'm not kidding you. And it was an eight-hour movie of a person sleeping. And I went to this art theater in L.A., I remember this, and they said, Andy Warhol sleeps. So we figured, hey, an Andy Warhol film, he's an artist, and, you know, he's probably going to do something terrific here. These were the first days when he first started experimenting with film. So we go to watch this thing, and we start watching, and it's this guy sleeping. Well, he gets in the bed first, and then he goes to sleep. And then he just keeps sleeping. And now we're into it for about an hour, and he's still sleeping. Now it's getting to the point where I'm going, i got to just stay here to see if anything's going to happen with this. And um, uh, it, three hours later, the guy's still sleeping. Uh, finally, somebody ran up to the screen and yelled, wake the fuck up! Anyway, we could do that. You know, I have a camera in there. I can just put the camera in there and put a slight light in there so that uh, we have some kind of picture of me sleeping. That might be good. Huh? Um, we could have the paint dry. Uh, we could, any, any other things? Uh, um, uh, let, let's see here. Any, anybody else have a, uh, 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 an idea uh, who wants to put it on the chat of what we could do that's really, like, not, not slow-mo, just slow. Just, you know, people maybe just sitting around and watching television. That's always, always interesting. I'll bet you I could get more viewers doing that than I can doing this, which is what I've done all my life uh, to great success, I might add, over the years. Uh, people have been entertained largely by what I do and amused by it. Um, and, and so I'm just wondering, you know, am I, have I been wrong all these years in the Internet? See, I mean, the whole, all the, the rules have changed when the Internet was created. And I think that I didn't adapt to it well. That I just, just thought, hey, I do radio shows on radio. I'll just do my radio show on the Internet because I can go all over the world. And, you know, if I do well, I could probably get more people than I get listening to radio. And I was uh, very wrong. <laughs> I was very wrong about that. So, um, uh, so I, I have no idea what to, uh, uh, what to say about it uh, and what to do. I, I many times get very frustrated by that. I get frustrated by the fact that there's a was a 14 year old girl out there did makeup hints that got a hundred million uh, uh, hits on YouTube. I'm not kidding you. A hundred million, and and all she's doing is putting on makeup. Uh, and there was somebody I saw uh, Seinfeld interviewing in his uh, um, comics and cars getting coffee. Uh, which is a great show if you haven't watched it. It's on Netflix now. And uh, she was like a, a, a YouTube phenomenon, had 100 million views or something. And, and all she did was put her makeup on badly. I mean, she put her lips really, oh, it was just, and she's very popular. But you know what it is? I don't think it's so much that it's slow stuff as it is, and the hint is here, it's short stuff. It's short attention span theater. I think it used to be a, a, a thing called that, it, where it's just people have such short attention spans that they really can't live with uh, with things like uh, like they are now. You know, I mean, with with things that are long form, they don't want to listen to this. A bunch of people talking for two hours, you know, and I don't know if I can expect them to. Uh, 
But I also found that when I've gone on, uh, when I was like out in, uh, uh, where was it, out in Fire Island, and I decided to just do some stuff live on Facebook, uh, walking down uh, the, the street and, you know, and showing people Fire Island, just walking and just talking, I got a thousand views on that, you know, and you begin to wonder, you know, what have I been working my ass off for here? Why can't, why shouldn't we just, you know, I don't know. I mean, I've got, my leg is killing me tonight. I, I don't know, I mean, one thing and another. But I, now I, I've got cheap drugs, so life is good. Did I tell you this? I got, I got my SAG after uh, health insurance, and with it, of course, comes a, a, a pharmacy plan. Uh, and I'm, I'm figuring, they say, well, you know, this pharmacy plan's different. You've got to buy three months at a time. And I went, oh, that's okay. Well, okay. I'll, it was costing me like almost $200 a month to get my drugs. So here I'll give them $600 once every three months and, you know, I'll get my drugs. The drugs come in and for three months, my usual $200 worth of drugs only cost me $227. That means that, the, uh, that I've almost one, uh, I just, you know, it was almost the same as one month. Almost. Uh, I mean, yeah, so a three months supply. And I'm going, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. Are they, did they add the numbers up right? But no, so I just want to get even sicker so I can get more pills to take so I, <laughs> I can get this stuff for free. The only problem was I needed, I needed a drug. This, this will show you how much drugs cost these days. I needed a drug. I'll tell you what it is, Cialis. No, I don't have trouble getting a boner. But this is nice to have. But I have um, a large pro and large prostate, and this helps me to pee. And it, it's it's usable for benign prostate hyperplasia. But drug companies don't want to give you a simple way to get that drug because number one, it's terribly expensive, and it is uh, it is it's terribly expensive. And on top of that. Um, uh, they, they figure too many people are going to say, well, I got a big prostate, but, you know, I need it for, I, but they really want it for the boner. So uh, they make you go through hoops to get it. So uh, they wouldn't immediately give it to me. My, my doctor had to apply for what's called prior authorization. It took like 24 hours. Boom. I now I'm getting the pills, which they wanted to charge me $1,100 for, uh, for a three-month supply, 125 bucks. Wow. And before it was costing me 75 bucks a month just for that pill. Now it's down to somewhere to $41 or something like that if you prorate it. So, uh, but on the, on the thing, they tell you what your pharmacy plan saved you. All right. And it said, your pharmacy plan has saved you $1,377. And it went. This is like this is like I I hit I hit the hit the the mother load of pharmacy stuff, but I, I you know I was told that SAG after which I'm a member of SAG uh, the SAG plan is one of the best medical plans in America, and I am so pleased to have it now. It is just uh, I, I I wish I had done this. I could have done this uh, ten years ago actually because of my of my advanced years. It's a senior. Thing that's offered to seniors. I couldn't get their normal plan because I didn't work enough under after to be able to get it. But I just wish all America, uh, you know, I wish I had been able to, I would have saved a lot of money if I'd gotten this plan earlier. And I know it was first offered to me. I know that I got a thing about a year ago and I didn't do anything about it because I went, eh, what is this? This, is, this doesn't make sense. It's too cheap. To begin with, it only costs $178 a month. Now, if you think about it, that's about the amount of money that I'm saving over my old drug plan per month for at least two of those months. So it even pays for itself, but on top of that, girlfriend's place where she works is paying the tab for our insurance. And uh, I thank them for that. But uh, even if we had to pay for it ourselves, I mean, look at all the money we save, you know. Uh, so I want to know why, under one drug plan, my Cialis costs $75 a month, and under another drug plan for another company, and I had to get prior authorization for that one too, for Oxford, it was 75 a month. 
I get it for like $41 a month. Why? It's the same pill. It's the same expensive pill that the, the company puts out. So I don't understand it. Anyway, my leg is killing me tonight. I don't know what this is. I hope I'm not getting a heart attack or something like that. No, I don't think so. Anyway, are my legs red at all? No, they look fine. Yeah. I just, it's just, uh, it's, it's just, uh, I think I may have slept wrong last night and heard it. Anyway. Ha! Huh, you know, I just blew the, uh, the time here. So I better get to the, uh, I better get to the citizen panel. Uh, you know what the citizens panel is. If you don't, go to gabnet.net. Over there, gabnet.net. Uh, you will see on the right-hand side of the page, it'll tell you all about the citizen panel, also how you can be part of the citizen panel. Uh, and it's a very simple proposition. Uh, and you use a thing called Skype, or you can just use your phone. You have a choice. And uh, uh, we, uh, we just let people give us a call. And then you out there who are watching this on YouTube, uh, and you can also see us on YouTube on the gabnet.net page as well, uh, can see what, uh, what the citizen panel looks like. And if you don't want to look at it, you can listen to it by simply going to gabnet.net. Up at the top of the page, I made a new box for it. You click on that box, and you get our 24-7 feed, and you can hear the audio live. You can also get that same audio in your car. Or you can actually, if you have Roku, go to the GabNet channel, and there is actually a place where you can listen to the live broadcast. So uh, there are a lot of ways you can listen to us live and uh, uh, in living color, okay? Uh, but right now, I am waiting for somebody to call us so we can start talking to people. Now, uh, Phil wasn't here last night, but I'm sure he will be here tonight. Uh, and uh, we had a great discussion last night, though, you know, um, uh, uh, we were getting into, you know, the, how can we call it, the gentrification of a lot of different, uh, different places and, and so on, and, and what gentrification does, and it was really a very, very good discussion. Let's say here, check your blood pressure. I check my blood pressure. My blood pressure is terrific. Uh, it's fine. Uh, I went to the doctor and they went, it looks, looks pretty good, Alex, you know. Uh, here comes, here comes Charlene is our first caller tonight. Gee, hello, Charlene. How are you? Oh, hi, Alex. Oh, oh yeah, hi. hi. Yeah, you're, you're on. We can, in fact, you're taking up the whole screen right now, but not for long because here comes Phil, you know, uh, so um, uh, we'll, uh, we'll check in with him as well. Little thing whirls around. There's Phil. Hi, Phil. Hey, good evening. Did you win an award last night? Three. You won three awards last night. Yeah. Uh, in my category, I took uh, first in uh, uh, color prints, mm -hmm. mon monochrome prints, and projected. And projected. Oh. So I had three different who are, photos. Who are, who, uh, uh, <laughs> you seem to be winning an extraordinary amount. Is this by any chance a... Uh, a photo club for blind people? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, actually in a retirement community. Oh, and these God. Guys, these guys, some of them are just phenomenal. Uh, and uh, But you see, what happens is when you first join the club, they start you out in uh, you know against new people. And uh, uh, so the people that are masters, uh, which some of them are just fabulous, uh, don't compete against me. Yeah. But uh, as you gain points by winning, then they stick you in the next category in the next category. By the way, by the way your pal Scott Boddicker just wrote, Phil is on, time for my nap. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's, he, he comes on, even when you see him, he's, on, he's having a nap. So. No, no, you can't, you, can't, you can't put him down with the same thing he put you down with. But it's true. No. Hey. It's 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 Lex Talionis. The the you know you you have to have equal uh, equal punishment. It, you know the punishment must fit the crime. Well, no, but but the fact is that the reason he uh, is, holds back is when he's very good when there's nobody else here and we talk with each other. Maybe there's one other person. He's very chatty. 
But he, then when everybody else calls, he kind of backs off because he doesn't well, want to. He doesn't I, want I, to intrude, which is a, a lesson. You, a lesson you probably should learn, Phil. Uh, yeah, I got a good suggestion for you. Yeah. call him up at, uh, at uh, ten o'clock your time mm -hmm. and chat with him for a half hey, hour. I got a suggestion for you. Blow yeah. me. Yeah. 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 You wish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think your first name's Ben? What? Ben Dover, you know, uh, <laughs> Benjamin Dover. Be Benjamin Dover, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very funny, Phil. Very yeah, funny. yeah. So, Alex? Uh, yes? Is your hat a pork pie hat? I don't, I, I guess this is a pork pie hat, yeah. I think. It's not kosher. I bought this on the street in Harlem. Yeah. <laughs> you could have never guessed, right? Yeah, those derby things are in style. If you flop it down. It could be like a derby, like rock and roll guys. Well, this doesn't. Happen. This really doesn't flop down. It's it's um, you know. I say this hat makes me look fun. like Norman Lear. You ever see Norman Lear and the right, hat he wears? Right. It's a Norman Lear hat. That's what it I is. Call. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, did one of the guys in Rocky wear a hat like that? Uh, in one of uh, in the Rocky movie. Maybe was, Mickey the trainer. It, or something. Yeah. No, it was um, uh, the uh, the uh, the brother-in-law, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Paulie, Paulie or something. Paulie, yeah. Yeah. What is this? Renee says he submitted three or four photos and they won again award. And I, I don't no, get that. It's not the. I, these are all oh. new. I, uh, I've never uh, seen uh, them Renee before. wants to know how your hand is. She can't. She doesn't call, but she wants to know how your hand is. My hand. Yeah. Well, I've got a couple of. Um, I took my stitches out because they made it like a two-week appointment. Mm -hmm. And thank God I took some of them out. I should have taken them out sooner because now I go back tomorrow and there's two that are stuck. I couldn't get them out. Oh, they'll get but them I out. guess they'll be able to get them out, right? They're like yeah. embedded in there. What, they weren't dissolving stitches? No, he mm. gave me the ones she had to clip off. Yeah. By the way, in case you've never listened to this program before, folks, people. this is a show where people call up and give us their medical problems. So, you know, it's... Uh, right. <laughs> Phil's trumped us though. Phil, Phil Phil's trumped us and will trump us in a few weeks because he'll be having he'll have a catheter for how long? Uh, oh, yeah. Ten to fourteen days, I think. The nineteenth, right? The nineteenth. The nineteenth. I never I think, heard about people having 30th. to have a catheter after having a prostate removal, but I guess uh, uh, I don't know. But uh, I talked to somebody else who had uh, an operation not too long ago that uh, required a catheter, and he took it out early. And that created all sorts of problems for this guy. So uh, I'm, you know, I'm resigned to the fact that it's going to be there. And you would uh, just think that, you know, let me explain the prostate to people. Do you know, Charlene? Because you're a woman, you don't have to know what a prostate is. Well, until I listened to this show, I didn't know as much as I know now. Unless a boyfriend Actually, told you to helping, stick your finger up his husband. ass and tickle it, what? My husband, I told him to get PSA test, you yeah. know, because mm -hmm. he has a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a prostate problem. Yeah, what is it? In he it's he it, constantly. It's enlarged. <laughs> yeah, it's an enlarged I prostate. I don't know, but they'll, they'll let him know after the blood test, right? Just because it's enlarged doesn't necessarily mean you have cancer. Uh, right. They found a, a, an early low-grade cancer on me. Yeah, could I let it go for 20 years? And then, you know, uh, by that time, I'll probably be dead anyway. Yeah. It's just that uh, I figured, what the hell? I get rid of the cancer, and I can sleep through the night, so I'm not peeing all the time. Well, uh, but you won't take the medicine. I take the medicine. I'm fine. I take the uh, the, the finasteride, which uh, shrinks it, and I take the uh, C uh, the Cialis, which uh, softens it, and I pee like a racehorse. Well, yeah. I, I take the Cialis. I stopped taking it lately. Uh, uh, you know, I, I have to keep arguing with them as to the price. But, uh, you know, because all of a sudden they give it to me and then they want, you know, they give me eight pills. And I said, no, this oh, is no, not no, a no, no, that's not what you want. You want the daily Cialis. That's what I want. Yeah. It's the daily and, Cialis that does it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know, uh, I figure it this way. I, I won't have to get out yeah. of bed to pee for about well, two weeks. Well, let me explain <laughs> to people. Let me explain to people what the prostate is exactly. And I explain it in this way. That the one reason I am an atheist and I don't believe in God is I feel that if there was a God, he wouldn't be that bad a construction person, all right? Because he invented this little organ, uh, and, and all the prostate really does is create prostatic fluid, which is not sperm. It's not the thing that creates babies, but it is the stuff that the babies swim in, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. 
And so the prostate only gives out with prostatic fluid. And it is um, behind your penis, I guess, it, yeah. it, near your bladder. And it, yeah. it's, it's, a don it's in a donut shape. Wow. Uh, you know, it's probably the only organ we have that has a hole in the middle, literally. And you know what goes, through, you know what goes through that hole? Urethra. The urethra, which carries your urine. So when you get to be older, this thing grows and grows, and then it starts pinching down on mm. the urethra, and that's why your husband's getting up five times a night to take a pee. Right? <laughs> he thinks because he drinks too much water. No, no. So I said he better get it. He's, a, he's over 50. You yeah. should get it checked, right? I, I, about half the time, I don't wake up in the middle of the night at all to pee, and then the other half I do once. Okay, and that's it. Uh, but uh, so what you'd have to do is, you know, you have to have pills and stuff that, that do this. But that's, ladies and gentlemen, what a prostate problem is for you. Oh, I also had a prostate infection and, uh, to, to boot all of this stuff. And that was causing me to pee uh, 20 times, 25 well, times. You know what the problem is? It ruins the quality of life. And here's how it ruins the quality of life. It's the same way IBS ruins the quality of life. If you feel that you can't go out because you might have to pee halfway down the street, it, it, it makes you think twice about going out or doing stuff or being social or whatever. Luckily, uh, I live in California. And what, in California, uh, you have to drive everywhere. And I have, uh, uh, you know, I have a car uh, and I spend a lot of time in it. So I have this bottle that they yes i have this bottle that uh you know they use in hospitals it's got the curve in it and everything yeah and uh you know i think they call it the trucker's friend yeah <laughs> but that, that saves my life well when i first started having the prostate problem i was working at sirius and i would literally at every at, <clears throat> at various breaks have to run out and tell them to have a record ready in case i didn't get back in time to take a pee because it would just become very urgent it wasn't like yes. you know like you could hold it off until the next break Can you imagine uh, waiting for the garage door to open or something and when you know? i finally <laughs> went to the doctors and they did all kinds of things which were very uncomfortable uh, they they gave me this uh, this one pill and they gave me a thing called flomax which also yeah. does what the Cialis does, but is is After, it's got effects. It's got effects. Makes you drowsy and things like that. Yeah. Uh, but it it did solve the problem, you know, and 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 that and that's why I'm surprised why you didn't stick with the Cialis or whatever. Is the finasteride? Uh, is that have female hormones in it? You know what it is. What was that? What, there's a there's a there's a thing you take uh, for balding. What's it called? For uh, Pro Pro Propecia. Pro Finasteride is Propecia. Oh. Yeah. So, therefore, it might be a female hormone. I don't know. The, it could very issue well be. with female hormones is that... You, you, know, uh, how, you know how to make a hormone. More cancer. You know how to make a uh, hormone, don't you? Refu uh, refuse to pay her. Yeah. Anyway. You're 130,000. Yeah. <laughs> 130,000. <laughs> Wait a minute. Stormy Daniels isn't a whore. She works for a living... In, in, Alex, what? before we get off the health issue, can we go over the uh, lenses that you get when you have cataracts and all that? Because I want to get see, them. See, <laughs> folks, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I don't have an audience. It's because a urologist. nobody wants to listen to old people gripe about their health. Am I? You know, a, they want, a, they want makeup hints, okay? You know, I'm female. Nice. I can't Scott. be an old Altacaca. What would I be? I'm not an Alta Caca. Do you know I was age outed on the intersection the other night? <laughs> you were age outed. Yeah, um, uh, Jack Bishop age outed me. <laughs> oh boy. Well, anyway, uh, anyway. Uh, so, uh, folks, this is what we what we have. What were you? Who was gonna? Were you gonna say something, Phil? About or you know, Charlene, you had a question. Yeah. Well, just about those lenses. Like I, I, I cataracts. Know my mother's 86, so I know a little bit about cataract ripening. Yeah. But but isn't there lenses that even if you get the cataract, you still have to pay for the lenses, right? So that you see, like your sight's almost like better than when you were 20 years old, right? Well, well they no, insert a lens, don't they? No, they insert a lens. I've had I have cataract. I've had uh, lenses in both eyes. I imagine maybe at his age, I would imagine extra. that uh, the Jeff Jeff has uh, has. Uh, did you have you had cataract surgery, Jeff? No. no. Wow. How, how about he, he has a lens. Yeah. Well, I have both eyes, and what happened is it got very soft in the middle. I couldn't see out of the middle, so they 
It's a simple operation. Supposedly years ago, it was a very complex operation in which you had to mm-hmm. sleep on a block every night to, right. to, for weeks on end. Here it's like pop, 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 pop. They put a cup yeah. over your eye. You come back the next morning. They take the cup back. You fill it up with something to drink. I don't know. And uh, uh, they send you home and tell you to keep putting these drops in your eyes for a week. And that's it. Yes, Jeff. There's a very nice lady in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. And she's a veterinarian mm-hmm. person yeah. who does glasses and all this kind of stuff well, for your eyes. Glasses? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. like a carpet layer that does bar mitzvahs, right? I don't That's, know. Yeah. <laughs> and but, she told me that there's actually like six people in the United States who actually do this stuff. Oh, for dogs or for, for animals? Most dogs, yeah. How do you but know? I do for cats. Yeah, but how do you know? How do they read the eye chart? Well, that's yeah. what she says. They start walking into the wall. Oh. The yeah. I, I do that anyway. Wait, right, 15 years? What are you saying 15 years for, Johnny? That's like the age of scotch. Oh, You're showing us what you're getting drunk on tonight? You know, John, I don't, I don't care for scotch. I don't. I've never developed a taste for it, but I've tried it. And and sometimes I go into a restaurant if they get like a thirty-year-old scotch or something, I'll I'll try it. But I just haven't developed that taste. Uh, Tastes uh, like iodine. Yeah, you know. You I, know I'm, something? I I've never been a drinker, as you know, Phil. Yeah. I, I, yeah. And um, I can almost count the amount of drinks I've had in my lifetime. Uh, and uh, but mm. uh, if I had a drink to drink. It would be. It was scotch. I liked scotch. I thought scotch was was interesting. Had an interesting taste to it, and I li- I would drink scotch, but I still wouldn't drink it to the point where I got drunk or anything. I mean, the, yeah. right. But uh, I uh, scotch, and people say, well, "What about vodka?" And I went, "Well, I used to drink vodka when I was you know before I was twenty one, and we all wanted to get drunk because you know we were underage, and that was more fun getting drunk when you were underage than when you suddenly could." F- you know, without recourse. Did they have Boone's Farm when you were a kid? Oh, when I was a you know, Boone's Farm apple wine came way later. I, in fact, I helped Pat Sky. I produced a, a record album for Pat Sky, the folk singer, uh, called "Songs That Made America Famous," and we did that entire, literally that entire album on Boone's Farm apple wine. See, which, when I which is the worst because if you drink yeah. too much of that stuff, you wake up with the worst headache you've ever had in your life it in the was morning. A buck. It was a buck a bottle yep. <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it also became very popular because it was like there was a point at which there were pop wines that came out. You know, they all had flavors and styles and so on. And this was like an apple flavored wine. The, the big kids drank it was terrible Matus. wine. It was terrible. It was just yeah, ghastly. You know, the the older kids had Matus. I think that cost a dollar fifty. <laughs> yeah, I think there was. Wasn't there a commercial? Matus Rose. Hey, hey. There was hey, also hey. a cheap booze Matus called Wild Rose. Irish Rose as well. well. Oh, was that a mixture of something? I don't know what it was. Mm. But, you know, nice but, train. You know, the nice prostate, train. from the prostate to scotch. But, well, it's certainly more interesting. I'm sure it would yeah. keep us getting a larger audience if we if we stuck hey, with this. Hey, guys, you know, what, this. I, uh, I, I sometimes put these glasses on, but actually uh, this is for my vision improvement. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, see, they have little oh, tiny holes yeah, in them. Yeah. See that? Yeah. So yeah. it's because you want to look like a fly. Right, the fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, Jeff Goldblum kind of thing. Okay. No, these are these work. You know, you you kind of you don't drive with them or anything. Yeah, but, but you know what it is. You know, you kind of you know why you know why they work. You know? you know why they work. It's like why? squinting. It's like squinting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like when you want to see something and you don't have your glasses on, you squint because that kind of makes it able to see it. And that's exactly what that does. It, it literally is forcing your eyes to squint. That's right. Yeah. And, and it goes really good with scotch. Too. Yeah, I would imagine. Kind of I would there. imagine. It improves your vision. Yes, Jeff had his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Oh, didn't you say one time that, you, that your father drank scotch? Did he drink scotch? No, he drank... Um, I think he drank whiskey. He liked yeah, whiskey. He liked uh, liked uh, what? Who's a big whiskey maker? Uh, I don't. Jack Daniels. Jack, Jack Daniels. Yeah, yeah. This is the old story I used to tell about my father and I are sitting at the bar at Calneva Lodge, while Frank and his pals are over in another little room having a party, and we're at the bar because he worked the the orchestra, and uh, 
uh, I just turned, I turned 21 that year, I think. And uh, my father said to me, he says, you know, before your old man goes, you know, I, I'd be really happy if you did something with me and had a drink. And I went, well, you know, I don't drink. Because I really, I'd gotten over drinking the minute I turned 21 because it wasn't fun anymore. Right. Uh, and um, I said, okay, well, I'll, you know, whatever. I'd love, sure, I'll have a drink with you. And he says, what are you going to have? And I said, whatever you're having. He says, all right, uh -oh. bartender, uh -oh. two Jack Daniels on the rocks. <laughs> all right. Uh, and uh, so they, the drinks come, and my father takes a drink and <laughs> downs it, okay? And... He's looking at me now, and I got to do the same thing. And I start to drink it. And the minute it hits my gullet, I go, Jesus fucking Christ. How do you drink this shit? And my father looked at me and said, so you think I've been having fun all these years, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, My grandfather uh, made his money uh, during the war. Uh, uh, in Worcester, Massachusetts. That's mm -hmm. where I grew up. And right in Worcester, my mom worked at this factory too, USS Steel. She uh, tested Grand Rifle Springs. That's mm -hmm. what they made at USS Steel. And uh, my grandfather owned the bar right near the steel mill. So all the workers came and uh, after their shift and uh, he, he told me a story where this guy used to drink 12 Boilermakers. I don't know if the young millennials listening to this know what a Boilermaker so, is. Say what it is. It's shot in a beer. beer shot with a beer. shot of uh, booze in it. That, yeah. Well, you know, one one after the other. You oh, know. They then they'd walk home. I thought they turned the shot over and they dump it, glass and right. all, into the yeah, beer. Yeah, they do. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, maybe the Irish do that, but the Lithuanians have, probably have a different custom. So they didn't have any glasses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boy, I, I just, I, I never really, but I never got into booze that much, you know. Um, Man, uh, as I say, when, before I before I, I turned I like this one, before so. I turned 21, because it was kind of like a rite of passage, and also because um, my friends were doing it, so it, you want to be part of your group. Uh, I would I would have I would occasionally have a drink, and I do remember one night we sat on a pier in Sausalito, right on the pier, <laughs> and we we had a we had a bottle of booze, and we said let's keep passing it back and forth until one of us falls in the water. Oh yeah, great! <laughs> and sure enough, one of us did fall in the drink. It wasn't me, but it was somebody else. But you know. Well, uh, yeah, I was never much of a drinker uh, yeah. uh, growing up. Or you know, even, Jewish men aren't after. Jewish men aren't drinkers, really. And by the way, we have with me three Jews here tonight. You're not Jewish, yeah. are you, Johnny? You know, I could be. But I could be. I, you know, I'd have to have a genetic test. I don't know. Hey, my uncle, yeah, my uncle the Albi. Yeah. My uncle Albi was arrested by the Gestapo in Vilnius during the war, and he spent some time in a concentration camp. I'm not sure which one. Yeah. Th thankfully, he survived, and I don't know why he was arrested. The family story on that's vague, but they who knows? Gypsies, you know, I, I, I think gypsies. they took gypsies. So if you're Lithuanian, maybe they thought he was a gypsy or something. No, nah, I wasn't a gypsy. I, you know, I think uh, somewhere there was a marriage down the line. I think, and uh, you could take genetic tests now that will tell you if you have. Uh, yeah, yeah, know. I sent away for one of those things from like you know, <laughs> Ancestry.com, and it comes back and says you're 99 percent Jewish. No fucking shit. I wanted a little more information than that. You know, I'd the, like to know. Hey, you is... were born. You were born in this part of Hung. Your family comes from this part of Hungary or whatever. No, you're 98. You're 99 percent Jewish. And I went, oh, yeah, tell me something I don't know, you know. What a <laughs> now, waste of 69 how, how bucks. Know, how, genetically, how do you know you're Jewish or you're not? You, you know, maybe you got Tay-Sachs disease or something. I don't know. How do they, how do they know from that genealogy? Oh, no, they, they know from genetics. They can do genetic testing, and they know the right, area right. from which you came and probably yeah. what, uh, what breed you are. 
you know. So, <laughs> so if you came from Africa, you're 99 percent black. You know what? what <laughs> yeah, well, they might say 99 percent Nigerian or 99 percent whatever. But in my case, it didn't say like it showed a whole big map of where yeah. I probably came from. And I know that already. You know, most of it, a lot of it was Germany and there was Poland and, you know, a little bit of Russia. Yeah. Those 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 areas on the map, if you look a little closely, it might have been the areas where your dad had concert dates. It could and be. <laughs> could have been. <laughs> no, he never Even went back. Than... He never went back. Once they left, they came here. They came before the war, however. So. Yeah. Yeah, my grandparents, too. They, uh, they were conscripting. Well, the Russians were conscripting young uh, Lithuanian men into the army, and my grandfather didn't want to do that, so... Yeah. You know, you know I mean, you, when you talk about concentration camps, I have a, a friend, Jack um, Garfine, who I would I really should get to come on this show some night. Just uh, forget you guys for two hours and just talk with him. Uh, hmm. This guy uh, came to America and became a motion picture and, and stage director of a fairly good note uh, with the actor's studio and so on. But it's like he had two lives because before he came here, he had been yeah. in eleven concentration camps as a oh. kid. As oh. a kid, yeah. Uh. And in fact, I told people here he, he met Mangala. I said, you know, I don't care that you knew Marilyn Monroe, so which he did, or that you gave James <laughs> Dean his first job. I'm just amazed you met Mangala. You know, uh, hey, but he, but hey, he, I, but I, but when I listen to his stories. I just can't imagine how anybody got through that. You know, yeah. how do you how do you survive? I mean, he tells how he survived it, but it was a you know he came this close to getting killed many times. Oh yeah, and I was, I've been trying to send you this, uh, uh, make a copy of it, uh, but it was the uh, interview that was done by the people that uh, interviewed the camp survivors for the movie. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Uh, Spielberg's movie. Yeah. And oh, my, Schindler's List. Schindler's List. And my yeah. friend's father mm -hmm. uh, survived two camps, and so did his his mother. And uh, but they interviewed the father, who was still living. And uh, it was a very very interesting interview. He he told you know basically his life story. Now, but I can't just rip it from one CD to another because uh, there's some sort of um, a, a thing in there that says it's, uh, you know, it's like protects it. So you can't uh, you can't duplicate it. Uh, so I tried uh, just downloading it to my Zoom recorder and uh, I can do that uh, and then yeah. make. Yeah. Take that and, and, and cut another one. Well, and make a you know, call. let's not let's not rip off the Jews. Uh, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> uh, but very interesting, just like your friend Jack. But they took my friend's dad when he was young. Maybe he was 12, 13 years yeah. old. Jack was, and, I think, 13 when they. Yeah. When he and because he was strong, uh, he, he was able to uh, do heavy work and, and, and so forth. Well, he, the reason and, he, the reason Jack survived was. Uh, they were taking ki kids, and they were saying, "How old are you?" And if they were under a certain age, they would make them go to the cha gas chambers. If they were older, they would mm -hmm. have them go into another line, which for, was for working. And mm -hmm. his mother told him, "Lie about your age." And the person he lied to about his age was Mangala. Wow, Jesus. you know, Mangala. Wow. Mangala looked at him and said, "How old are you, young man?" And he said, "Fifteen." And uh, he said, uh, and they checked. Patted his cheek, touched, him, stroked his cheek, and said, "Nice boy, nice boy." Oh, and you go over there. Creepy. You go yeah. over there. And he started going over there, and then he started hesitating. And one of the capos, these were the Jews who who were the, the guards, kind of, in yeah. in, in, in the uh, in, in the, the camp. concentration camps, uh, said, uh, "Just move your ass and get going." He says, "Well, I." I really lied to that nice man back there. Hey, hey. Oh, jeez. And I really should go back and tell him that I was lying <clears throat> to him. And he said, just keep walking. Right. And he said, that, yeah. that was one of the people who saved my life. You know. Uh, As a contractor, I worked for this guy uh, who was uh, Yugoslavian. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we talk at lunch. And uh, this guy uh, grew up uh, during the war. You know, he was mm -hmm. a kid. And uh, his uh, village or his town was occupied by the Nazis. And he uh, uh, was sent out 
at night from the barn or the place they were hiding. This is him telling us this, to run and get food. And he said they used to, uh, the Nazi soldiers used yeah. to take shots at him. And, you know, he'd, he was so fast, they, they couldn't hit him. And he's t- sitting there telling us this story. And then... Uh, but you can't imagine, said, you can't imagine yeah, having, yeah. To, having, having to live that life. Uh, oh, and then he, he said uh, there were some collaborators in his village who were captured and hung. And uh, they made the little children, he, he was one of them, stand and watch the hanging. And he said he turned his head and the soldier forcibly turned his head around and made him yeah. watch the hanging. I, I don't want to distract you, but we, we just lost Charlene. Oh, no, there she is. There she is. Ah, okay, uh, you see, we can tell now when you're when you're dropping off because the camera starts going down. We could use yeah, a few and more. Now the now the fucking Nazis are in charge of Ukraine. You know, Pravi Sector, uh, Azov Brigade. Those are the people that are fighting in uh, you hear, Eastern Ukraine. You want to hear something very interesting? Uh, and I I learned this years ago because I I love to talk about it on on radio programs and so on. There was a group in, uh, gee, I can't remember where it was, called the Ustashi. I think maybe it was something like one of the one of the Slavic states. Yeah. It was called the Ustashi, and they were uh, they were you know a really mean bunch of of Nazis to you know go around killing a lot of people. Well, people. after the war <coughs> was after the war was over, they uh, came to the United States. And because oh, they were yeah. Catholics, the Catholic Church took them. Yeah. And so yeah. they had a, 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 a guy in Chicago who was the head of the Astashi. He was famous for having killed over 100,000 people and supposedly at one time killed six rabbis with his bare hands. And yet what happened was the Catholic Church was harboring these people in the United States. Why? Because they were Catholics. And, and yeah, it was just, it, what's the book? It's, it's in uh, Devil's uh, uh, Chessboard about the Dulles brothers and how they, uh, they, they were called rat lines, where after the war, all these Nazi criminals were funneled uh, from different parts of the world, including the U.S., yep. because... They were cooperating with the CIA to give information on Russians and, uh, you know, Soviet agents, whatever, because they had a lot of information. So it's in this book. This is a fantastic book. It'll make you throw up. Uh, The Dulles Brothers, I'll tell you, uh, um, this is on TV. I don't give a shit. If I went to the cemetery where Alan Dulles is buried, I would piss on his grave. Really? I swear well, I have to, to, I have to check yeah. that out. The, the guy yeah. who was in Chicago was named Artur Arturkovic, if I remember correctly. And yeah. they finally caught up with him. And they, they finally accused him of having been a murderer uh, uh, for the Ustashi during the war. I yeah. think they put him on trial. They found him guilty, but they couldn't deport him. And why couldn't they deport him? There's a law about deportation. If you're going to deport somebody, you better find a country that's willing to take them. And yeah. there weren't any countries wanted to take a, 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 a Nazi uh, murderer, okay? Yeah. So Artukovic, yeah. nope. I think, just rotted in jail here. They never were able to get him out of here. But yeah. he was yeah. languishing for maybe 20 years in this country, living the good life uh, before they ever caught him. And he was being harbored by, uh, I think there was a certain um, group of Catholics, it was like a sect or something like that, that took care of him and also took care of a lot of other uh, people who came from, from Europe. Uh, but they wouldn't it, send them to Venezuela or any of those? Uh, the, yeah, know. they did. The rat lines well, went well, all over well, the no, place. Well, no, what, you happened, know. what happened was... Argentina. The reason, Argentina, the reason they well, went yeah. to Argentina was only because a lot of the ex-Nazis went to Argentina, so they protected each other. And you could go live out in the country, and uh, there were people who would watch out for you and make sure you didn't get caught. I mean, that's how Borman lived for so long on the land, uh, was because of, of the kind of protection he was afforded, not by the Argentinian government, but by this network of people who would, you know, keep the Argentinians away from them. 
Was Mengele one of the ones that went to Argentina? Um, Mengele? They think so. I yeah, know. Mengele. Not Borman. Excuse me. Uh, Mengele was the guy there who went to Argentina. There was that movie, the boys, the boys from Brazil, was yeah. about... Yeah, like well, yeah, but that was fiction. That was fiction. Right, it was. Right. Hello, Patrick. Hi. Yeah. We're talking about Nazis and booze. Yeah. What are you drinking? Uh, coffee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing tea. I'm trying to do tea now so I can do, get more sleep at night. What do you need sleep for? Uh, hmm. What do I need sleep for? Alex, caffeine, it has, tea has double caffeine. No, it doesn't have double caffeine. It doesn't have what tea. Huh? You get, say, it depends on what kind of tea. You Is get it S-H-I-T. Tea? It doesn't have as much caffeine as uh, uh, C-U-N. T. T. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, it's International Women's Day. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just celebrating the woman. This is this is <laughs> international. Oh. This is International Bitches Day. Come on. Let's let's uh, let's hey, give my friend, my let's friend give them their a, due. Okay. Let's that. buy them a present and then they can clean up the kitchen. Speaking about yes. bitches, oh, my friend true. Eddie from Greenpeace had the most perfect description of Jeff Sessions. He called him that fucking little gerbil bitch. I just love that fucking little gerbil bitch. Fucking <laughs> little gerbil I, I bitch, like doo da, doo da. Fucking you know, little John, gerbil John, bitch. I like what Jeff Sessions is doing because I don't believe in these sanctuary things. I believe that they put a lot of people. Oh at boy, risk. here we go. Here, here we, we go, go man. Well, we're off to. <laughs> you put them at risk. We're off to the races. You just had to mention Jeff Sessions, didn't you, Johnny? Come, come mm, over, no. Phil. Come on, we'll we'll have a couple of drinks and talk about Jeff Sessions, the gerbil. <laughs> first of all, first of all, they 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 uh, the president today was talking about how the mayor of Oakland it has endangered the lives of of officers who work for the government. And okay, tell us one officer that's been hurt by this they, sanctuary they, city oh, rule. You know, it, it's it's a uh, slippery slope because they could have taken a thousand. Uh, guys, bad guys. Uh, no, we don't know. No, they weren't. Like no, that. they weren't all bad. They had to begin with. They couldn't. They didn't know they were bad. Nobody had ever proved they were bad. There was no court of law that was going to say they were bad. They were just going to pick up Mexicans and throw them out of the country. Well, they're also I I here illegally. But believe me, they're not on. They're not on the on the radar because they're nice guys. But no, I, if I were if I were a, uh, uh, I would want to be off the radar as well. If I were just, right. you know, no, these guys are gang members. These guys are no, are, oh, are, are God. You know, you know what they do. You know what they. What you've eaten up. You've eaten up this lie where you where you mention things like they're gang members. Yeah, I'm sure there's some that are gang members, but not well, all of them are gang members. Awesome. Not even the vast majority of them are gang members. Even though they're here illegally, they'll get to some process. of them are just guys that stand out in front of Home Depot trying to get work doing your yeah. lawn. You know? Yeah, you're living a, 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 a false equivalency because uh, you're, you're comparing uh, uh, these guys to these, uh, you know, mundane guys that just want to, uh, you know. Oh, I'm support. saying no, no, your, yours is a false equivalency when you're trying to say they're all part of gangs. You use what I are, use. Are they all right? part of gangs? Are they all part of gangs? Every single one of them? Many. Hey, uh, many, I many. A, how many? Comment. How many? I got a comment. Yes. 107. Uh, you know what? Uh, what what uh, Jeff Sessions and 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 the uh, Democrats in the state are doing is is politicizing police work. Uh, yes, the MS-13 here, just five miles away from where I live, these MS-13 uh, gang guys went out into one of the most beautiful open space sections where there's a waterfall nearby, and they hacked to death one kid. They cut off his fingers with a machete shot him a few times, his buddy, MS-13. So they caught most of them, except uh, one kid fled. Uh, they think he went uh, back to El Salvador or something. You know, he's gone. That's he, not he even Mexico, the by the way, Phil. But, see, now, now if, if uh, ICE had uh, just worked under the table uh, with the Oakland PD or the San Rafael PD or whoever, and said, look, we are looking for this guy. He's a murderer. Uh, you know, he's wanted. But then to politicize the whole uh, thing like they did. Now, you, Alex, you're right. I think most of uh, the, the immigrants here are, are wonderful people. I know some. Uh, it, it's the drug 
uh, dealers and and the gangs that that bring this whole down. And, and they're and, not and all they should be. Yeah. So I, yeah, it, you know. Well, I, I have nothing against rounding up criminals. I have something with a no. This wasn't a roundup of criminals. No matter what your little asshole Trump says. No, no, no. Where do you get your information? Where do you get your information that they're all criminals from? Trump, that fucking goddamn asshole of a liar who just yesterday allowed people to bring in elephant tusks into this country because that's what his son wants to hunt. Wait a minute. Put your hand to your ear like this. And I'll tell you where I get my facts. Where do you get your facts? Them all. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's the same place I do. So you know, I mean, we're we're, we're blood brothers. Um, uh, no, did you hear about that? That he be he, he, okay? Did a little executive order that you can bring elephant tusks into the country now because his yeah, son yeah. hunts them. Well, you know, I I don't know the facts around that. I don't know uh, why he would allow that. Because uh, his sons killed elephants. No, but it's horrific what they do to these ele- these poachers, uh, yeah. do to the elephants for for these tusks. Yeah, well, then uh, then you right. should the, you, in any country that allows them in is facilitating that bad behavior. Absolutely. So you know there must be something else going on. Why you know who the hell needs uh, this ivory? You know, uh, I I just don't understand. But, you know, on the other hand, I like the negotiating things that he's doing with the tariffs. Uh, he's, oh, yeah, uh, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. Said, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Canada and Mexico. Oh, that's no, said, that's going to be really good. Now, let me see here. Let me let me just postulate this for you, Phil. All right. Yeah. For instance, China or these countries that supply us with the vast majority of our steel, because only 5% of the steel used in the United States is made here. Because we don't have the plants anymore, okay? And we're not going to get the plants again. So now you're China, and uh, you, they put a 25% tariff on you, and they go, okay, we'll raise the price of steel 25%. Right. Now it, now, can- now it comes back to bite you in the ass. Well, you know, that's been biting us in the ass since the days of Walmart. Uh, stop stopping, and they're not buying American-made products. They're buying Chinese-made products, and you put all the American companies out of business. Somewhere, some way, you got to pay the price. Well, so you, so you, so so they'll they'll pay the tariff, and they'll also raise the price of steel, and then they, then your car is going to cost more, and your beer is going to cost more, and 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 you know, it comes back to bite you and me in the ass. Somehow, yes. this whole tax break that he gave Americans is going to be eaten up between that and every other thing he's doing that's going to be taking money out of our pockets. people to make a living wage. You want people to make money. There's only one way you can To begin with, they're not going to get steel. They're not going to get steel jobs, Phil. There are no steel jobs to be had. They'll they'll be steel jobs. No, they're they're not going to build new steel mills. OK, well, he thought they were going to, you know, bring back the coal miner too, Trump, yeah. right? And, and let's bring back coal. Bring back yeah, let's steel. bring back coal, something we're trying to get rid of. And that's yeah, because they're selling it to the Vietnamese, uh, the, the South, uh, the, the Vietnamese, not South and North anymore, but the Vietnamese are, uh, you know, Trump said, hey, you know, buy our coal. And 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 they are, uh, you know, because we have we have things that we can export. You are, but you know, can, so if, for, for, to begin empty. with, to begin with, you're allowing a man who was a terrible businessman, okay, there's terrible a, businessman, to make the these kind of decisions and say, "Oh, this sounds like a good idea." Well, no, it's minute. not. Alex, it's not. It, you got to start. And then somewhere. all of a sudden, gotta, all of us, all of a sudden, you know who one of the major producers of, of steel is for this country? Canada. Yeah. And you're yeah. not going to tar- put a tariff on them, right? You're not going to put a tariff on Mexico. These guys you hate. Plus, because China is dumping uh, and controlling their currency. So China, China, so China will just simply say 25% more for Chinese steel. If you don't want to buy it, they'll buy it in India. Well, you that's know. okay. Okay, well, yeah. you know, fine. Well, it, have, it's not, it's not, not, not going to hurt China at all. Yeah, we have a half a trillion dollar a year deficit with China. How are you going to change do you this? Know we have 100, do, you, do you know how much money we owe China? Yeah, and yeah. it's getting worse yes, every year. Yes, and it gets worse every year. If China wants to really get back at us in this trade war, they'll just pull, call in the debt. Well, how do you? And we'll you know, go back. We'll go fucking bankrupt. Just keep doing the same thing over and over. 
You know, uh, and hey, has anybody heard the news? I understood that South Korea was going to announce some uh, Trump. No, they already Korea, have. You haven't paid North attention. Korea, North Korea, uh, Kim Jong Un sent a letter uh, to is going to meet with Trump. Trump's going to meet him. And this was just on KCBS. You know, I listened to KCBS. That'd be fun because you can watch the two of them, which we'll figure yeah, out which one's yeah, the biggest so idiot. Said, yeah, Kim said he's going to stop. All further nuclear testing for for it, now it, for it now while while the discussions sense. are going on, yeah. yeah. Well, that's fine. You got to start somewhere. Where have we been? Yeah. All we've been doing is re, is ignoring this guy for the past two or three uh, uh, generations of presidents. Wait a minute. But hold on a second. Hold on a second. No, it, 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 this guy North it, it, is threat. North Korea's threat has been ignored. North Korea's by, threat has never been nuclear up until now. Uh, no, no it, it has it, never it, been nu nu it has never been nuclear it, it has never been nuclear until now am i right I, or am i wrong about that do you know patrick hey, or don't. jeff jeff you're jeff you're wait a minute wait. No. jeff says i'm correct you're well, correct. he's not right what, will you let let him li say something here phil oh. no, i i listened to it on msnbc uh this morning quite a bit and uh you know, the guy who's the president now has only been there for about six years. Yeah. Right. So, uh, you know, the, the history before that is quite different. Yeah, yeah. but he's been pursuing. Hold on, hold on a second, on. Phil. We're talking That's... over here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And, he's, and he has nuclear equipment. And, uh, you know, it's still somewhat un, under development. Yeah. Okay. Um uh, and I think that the biggest change is going through South Korea, talking to them directly. And the guy who was uh, on the uh, TV today was from South Korea. Yeah, there's some Not noise before. somebody's making. Quit uh, rattling stuff there. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. And so was it was well the North Koreans, uh, the South Koreans. Um, up the uh, <laughs> up the uh, up the ante on this whole thing. Uh, they they're the ones I think that gave Trump the letter from Kim Jong Un, inviting him to talks. I guess maybe in in North Korea. I don't know if he's going to go no, to North Korea. Or not. From what I heard today, uh, nobody said that it was going to be any place. There was no no uh, place. Yeah. No location. Yeah. 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 Mar a Lago. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and we don't even know that Trump is going to go. Yeah, well, he Trump said, I think Trump said he's willing to talk, you know. That, well, that's yeah, right. That's they have mean. these meetings. And, 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 and I'd, be, I'd be really happy if they talk with him because there's nothing like having these guys talk to a real politically savvy human being. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I agree. Everybody <laughs> likes the guy when they meet him. I don't give a shit. I'd hate him. I'd hate him. He's everything I hate about a human being. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Trump okay. or Ung? No, I've no, I've I've come, yeah, I've, 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 come, I've, come in, I've come in proximity of Donald Trump, and he wasn't a nice guy at all. Yeah. Okay. So you know who's got to set the there. meeting up is Dennis Rodman has yeah, to yeah. set this meeting up. You know. Right. <laughs> well, you know, I I, I well, think he was Trump, on The Apprentice, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it, yeah, maybe you're right there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but, you know, the, talking and opening up a discussion is the first part to peace. And uh, no one else has achieved this. Mm -hmm. And you got to give the guy his due. Let's and, see. you know, well, you don't want to give him World War II. Him props or, for anything. Well, who was the guy, guy? Who was the, who was the prime minister? Trump. It was the, prime, uh, the uh, foreign secretary of, uh, of uh, Britain who came back and said, I've, I've uh, hauled up a piece of paper and said, we have peace in our time. He had signed Mount a peace Biden. pact with Hitler. Was that Mount Baden no, or uh, no, uh, oh the other guy that Chamberlain? Huh? Chamberlain. Chamberlain. And that, uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, sure. Yeah, signing these things always bring peace. Yeah. Well, and nobody signed you anything know, yet, but they're starting to talk, which is much better than having nuclear arms in the hands of a look, man. Look, I think he, I, I think Kim, Kim Jong Un was always a, a person you could talk to if if you just uh, approached the situation and said, let's try and figure this thing out. But that yeah. isn't the way it's been handled up until now by either uh, the f former presidents or our current president. Right. In fact, our former presidents didn't care that much about North Korea because they did know that North Korea had all kinds of problems 
uh, feeding their people and so on. So they weren't the kind of yeah. country. But but Kim Jong Un has kind of getting gotten the country together more than his father ever did, and um, I think they become more of a danger. Uh, when they are capable of these things. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I, I see why now I think Kim Jong-un has been using the whole nuclear thing as a pretext to being able to get people to talk to him and, and to talk about this. I think that's what his whole aim was in the beginning, not to lob a rocket to California. If he did that, he'd have about five minutes to survive in North Korea. He wanted people to take him seriously. And you know something? Because he has a nuclear weapon or looks like he has a nuclear weapon, people are taking him seriously. So, well, they, so they the, strategy, the, the strategy won, and Uncle Fuckface took the bait. Uncle Fuckface is talking peace now. You know, I mean, uh, he, yeah, he's talking he, peace on Tuesday and on Thursday he'll be talking war. And then on uh, on Saturday, he'll be talking he, Shabbos. He, he, you know, I mean, come on. Of, he could be the second coming of Christ and you would still hate him. Oh, I would know? hate him more if he was the second coming of Christ. OK, <laughs> I'm Jewish. Yeah, and then, for crying then he's got out his loud. Sidekick, little gerbil bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Little gerbil <laughs> bitch. That, Here's the thing. <laughs> Didn't it, it, she get fired? <laughs> no, Jeff Sessions is the gerbil bitch. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. What? That was the hot one. That was the oh, hot yeah. one. Hope. Well, didn't Jeff Sessions, he went to California in the last couple of days yeah. and was out there yeah, giving speeches about how... Uh, Jerry Brown, that, uh, you know, and I like Jerry Brown. I mean, he's a little off center when it comes to be as as a as a person uh, you know, he's he's strange. My uh, pal Jerry is cool. He yeah, is cool. Well, he, he has been cool over the years. I I, I no, I was I was friends I was friends with him for a while and I got to know him and I like Jerry Brown a lot. I was his neighbor. Yeah, but did you yeah, know? But that's the did old you know? Jerry Brown, the new no, Jerry, this Brown Jerry Brown. Was wacko, just, well, no, no, the old Jerry Brown was wacko too, but he was wacko <laughs> on the side of good. Okay, I mean, didn't it, you know it, the father too, Alex? What? You used to talk about that. What? You knew the father? Uh, or just uh, yeah, no, the, no, the father. I knew who the father was. He was governor when I was a kid. Yeah, right. Edmund G. Pat Brown. Hey, when right. Pat Brown set up the uh, the California state college system, it was free. UC Berkeley was free. UC Santa Cruz was free. UC LA was free. That was Pat Brown that did that. Probably still <laughs> is. Got the grades. How, how, do they have a 5.0 average now? <laughs> I don't know. I, you know. I thought it 4.0 was the top. I know, yeah, 4.0 or 4.3 or something, but uh, I, you need a 5.0 to get in there now. And, yeah, uh, really. Yeah, well, it's it's tough to get in. Well, also, everybody well, wants to get in. Everybody, college. everybody wants to get in there, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, it's... it's yeah. uh, yeah. It's it's a it's a a school everybody wants to be part of. Is it still uh, principally uh, cost free? No, 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 no. Oh, it's no. Not school. It's like twenty grand a year now, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's still, if you compare that to things like Harvard and so on uh, and it's Yale, like eighty grand. Yeah, it, that's cheap. My daughter, my daughter went to Chapman in Orange County, which is part of the same one. You know, like Nixon went to um, Whittier College. Uh, Whittier, Whittier. Well, Chapman and Whittier, they're, they're all part of the same group. And that was 40 grand a year uh, uh, several years ago, and it's more now. Uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, UC Berkeley is a God, real God, I'm deal. glad I didn't have any kids. Uh, yes, yeah. uh, Charlene has her hand up. You know, um, he's doing something. Uh, what would you call him? Fuckface Trump? Yeah. Yeah. Well, isn't he, isn't he doing something now with Twitter that they have to look into this now that he's not, um, he's, uh, what do you call him, deleting them or what do you call it when you take them off? I forget now. Well, there, there are certain reasons you can get thrown off Twitter. He, he shouldn't, no, he should mute them instead of, uh, you know, cutting them off his page. Oh, and, oh he's, 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 oh, he's cutting people off his page. Well, he has a right to, to, to block people. Everybody yeah, has a right. Well, the right. Well, My wife every day him. writes him and calls him a fuck face, you know, so. <laughs> because, because Alex, he's a public figure and they say that uh, it could be infringing yeah. upon people's civil, you know, your right for free speech. No, Pat, Pat, well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Face. When Patrick's been very quiet tonight, when Patrick is quiet, I get very suspicious that he's either thinking bad thoughts about us or he is bored with the discussion. Uh, what are you thinking, Patrick? I give Trump a lot of credit for the North Korean thing. 
Mm -hmm. I think he's full of shit on tariffs. Um, the whole Twitter thing, I give a shit about. Um, so there we go. That that's the three topics what, that we what, come. What, what, what do you mean the Twitter thing? You missed the prostate. The, 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 <laughs> Twitter thing, uh, Charlene just brought oh, Twitter, up. Twitter, Twitter. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you feel about that? You, don't I don't care. Give a shit. Yeah. He said. Oh, I thought he said it was bullshit. No, he has. You know, he has the right to block people from his Twitter feeds if he wants to, uh, and give people, of course, a false impression that everybody loves him. You know, but he gives everybody a false impression anyway. Hey, that's yeah. how the Russians are going to beat us. You know, the, all, it's real simple. I'll tell you how. Uh, they're going to set their guy on Twitter and start insulting Trump, you know, calling him this or that. He's going to get so distracted on Twitter that this, the Russians will overwhelm us with their new nukes, and that's it. That, yeah. That's I over. That's what they've done. Uh, yeah, Patrick? <laughs> Patrick? Yeah, that's something I find mildly humorous now, is the people <laughs> that are in the Democratic side of politics now see the Russians as the Republicans have seen the Russians throughout the Cold War. Yeah. And now the, now the Democrats all say, the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming, while yeah. they made fun of those of us who always felt the Russians were bad. And now the tables are turned. I, and it, I, I, I would, dis I would, wait, I would disagree with you to a certain extent here, and follow my logic on this. I don't think Democrats ever felt that the Russians were okay, all right? They did uh, because they were communists. Will you let me finish, Phil? That, that we didn't think, I don't think, felt that they were okay. Uh, but that also, uh, they hadn't been up to the no-goodnik stuff that they're up to now. In other words, we, ha we over the years, have not had Vladimir P Putin totally unleashed. Now we do. They're uh, picking on well, their own spies me, in the well, UK. You, uh, we know that, Phil. We're not talking yeah. about that right now. We're not talking about the fact that Putin is, in fact, a murderer, all right? So, and that's how he keeps his place. Uh, you mean like Jong-un? He doesn't want to ever not be president uh, or prime minister of the Soviet, you know, of Russia, because the minute he isn't, they are going to start coming after him with every legal method known to mankind for all the criminal activities, the amount of money that he has made. I mean, a, a good example would be that a few years ago he jailed the, mo the biggest oligarch, the biggest rich person in Russia. And then all the other oligarchs went to him and said, how do we keep from going to jail? The and, Saudis are doing the same wait thing. Wait you let me finish. All right. What was, what was I going to say next, Phil? Well, you said uh, they, they he jailed all the uh, the oligarchs. No, and now I didn't say that. Isn't what I, you weren't even you weren't even listening. How much? You are how much? And it was fifty percent. It, it was fifty percent. Yes, and, right. and that and That's so thing we're gonna he say. he has kind of illegally become one of the biggest billionaires in the world. By the way, you know who the number one billionaire is now. Uh, the Sultan of Jeff Bernard. Bezos, the Jeff guy with Bezos. the crazy eyeballs. Jeff yeah. Bezos, number one, one hundred and twenty three billion, I think. And then he's followed up by uh, Gates, who comes in at about 98 or something like that, or maybe 102 uh, billion. And then, uh, then the Sage of Omaha. And hey, my mother used Warren to Buffett. say, never trust anybody with weird eyeballs. And there you go, Jeff Be Bezos. You know, in, in 10 years, 15 years, that guy could be a trillionaire? Well, anyway, the point is, <laughs> the point is that the, I don't think the Democrats or the liberals ever felt fondly <laughs> about Russia, ever. That's a misnomer. You think because they were, you know, that, that went back to the days when there were communists. They were communists there, and everybody thought, oh, well, if you're a liberal, you're going to be for the communists. No, it's not true. They were never for, for, for the Soviet Union. They were always in Russia. They were always very careful about them, just as much as the Republicans were. But the Republicans used them as a lightning rod, you know, and they use them as a, oh, God, you know, the commies are going to be taking over the country if we don't watch out. There's a commie under every bed. Oh, let's jail all these people who are making movies that are communists. And, you know. In speak, in new speak, they call them progressives now instead of commies. <laughs> 
what the fuck was that about, Phil? Yeah, well, that, that's that's the new comedy. To begin with, I hate the term progressive. I hate the term progressive. Upside down. Yeah. yeah, I know, but that's that's what it means. I hate the term. But anyway, all I'm saying is, no, no. Democrats weren't for the Russians particularly. But the fact is, you've got a president who's denying what the Russians have done. That doesn't want to doesn't want to take sanctions against them. Doesn't want to stop it from happening. And he, quite frankly, I think he's been in bed with them all along. I think they got those. Know. I think they got those pee on the president pictures. Is what I think they've yeah, got. How do you know what they do? What they're doing in the background to 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 fix these things? If you don't talk to the guy, you can't you can't have peace. Yeah. If you, you, don't, you don't talk to the if, if you don't talk to the guy and put sanctions against him, he won't rig your elections. Well, uh, they did put sanctions against him, but meanwhile, you know, we'll we'll see we'll see what happens in eighteen. He is not going to. He they got stuff on him. You got to know they got stuff on on. All right, Trump. so you, know, you, hey, you did, don't think did, there's did, stuff on yeah, Hillary too, man. You know, uh, what's look how her name? he look how uh, he look, the, the porno star. Yeah, look how he's trying to sh shut her up. Yeah, well, I know, but uh, you know, I would have banged her too. And, I, and, I wouldn't have banged her. She is just too, those phony press on tits just don't turn me. I like that. <laughs> you like? That? I think she should be. She should be on the show, Alex. Your viewers will uh, escalate by a couple thousand. Oh, I would. Yeah, I would blow out YouTube if I had uh, Stormy Daniels on. <laughs> yeah. but, Isn't Stormy suing Trump now for not signing that disclosure thing or something? Well, no. What happened was, is that the the, the area where it had an it had the initials D D A K A, and then there was a line to fill in what the A K A was. Uh, yeah. It wasn't signed because I guess they never had him sign it, so they didn't have to put A K A Donald Trump. So she claims that it's not valid because he never signed it. I don't think so. I think if she, she signed it, she'll then, give the money back. Well, it's too late now. Yeah. Well, the point is, I, I don't think she should give the money back. But the thing is, there there are certain legal things where uh, if you sign something and then you took some money for it, if the other guy didn't sign it, you're still showing your agreement to, to confidentiality. And I think right. that's where she's in trouble. But quite frankly, I'd like to see her give the money back and then just tell us what it was like to blow him. You know? Well, you know, well, while, you while his while his wife show. was at home nursing their newborn show. child, you know, well, I, I think it's it's pretty good that he was able to, you know, it's a married woman. Uh, it's got all the all the drama, you know, yeah, it's got uh, all the drama. And you also got uh, malaria at home just having given birth to her <laughs> newborn son. And he's out fucking Stormy Daniels and a Playboy playmate. Not, not a bad way to go. <laughs> well, no, he did it in the same way that Harvey Weinstein did it. He used his power and prestige to do it. Oh, you think you think that Stormy Daniels said to herself, "I got to get me some of that Trump." She's do you really a, think a, so? She's a virtue. She's just such such a virtuous woman that yeah, I think that she said, "I'm, I, you know, I want to, I want to bang a billionaire," you know, uh, just the same way that they want to bang talk show hosts. You know, it's, nobody she, wants to bang a talk show host. I got to oh, tell not, you, not anymore, that's but, why <laughs> that's why Matt Lauer had to lock his door when they were in the room. You know, yeah, really. Well, that, that's so he could trap them in. Hey, there, listen, but, compared to a lot of these guys, Matt Lauer's a find. You know, <laughs> it's yeah, like it's so. like Alec Baldwin was saying on a show the other night. You know, can you imagine Harvey Weinstein saying opening his robe and saying, hey, do I look like Brad Pitt? You want some of this? You know, <laughs> he says, and looking like a stuffed derma. Yeah. Hey, Alex. Yeah. You know, I liked, I saw that Alex, uh, Alec Baldwin thing, too. And I liked the way he gave props to uh, Dick Cavett and um, who was the other guy? Late night, you know, what was his name? Oh, God, I'm losing my mind. You know, the cigarettes. We all lose oh, our mind. Tom Snyder. Tom Snyder. That was it, yeah. right? Because I oh. like both those guys, too. Talking about those guys, the guy you had on uh, the replay uh, last night of uh, uh, oh, La Kevin Meany. Larry, no, no, yeah, no, Larry, uh, yeah, King. La King. Larry King. Larry King. Larry King. That was wonderful. Yeah, uh, that's why I know, played it because it was wonderful. It yeah. was, and I love Kevin Meany. Yeah, Thank I you. never, you know, <laughs> and people, I, in case people want to see it, it's up on my Facebook page, so. Yeah. You know, I, I never realized I, I got a different view of Larry King. And, uh, you know, he basically also interviewed himself 
uh, you did a good job, but you know, you, you let him go and you let him talk. Well, I, as I said uh, in the interview, and I also said prior to the interview in my introduction to the to the footage, uh, the hardest thing you can do if you're an interviewer is interview another interviewer. Yeah, mm. because he interviewed himself. He, well, he that's where that's what happens. Either that happens. Yeah. Or they they feel uncomfortable not being the person asking the questions. Yes, Jeff. I was so impressed that your voice, as right. it comes out today, that much. is much better than it yeah. was. Oh, it hadn't changed that much. You know, I, I think it, you still have a young uh, set of pipes. Yeah, it's just that unfortunately <laughs> that illusion is being ruined by the fact that this is TV. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> well, that's okay. You know, you know, yeah, that's that's why that's why they created radio, uh, yeah. you know, for you know, this, so you got, you know, you I got have a face. A, I have a face for radio. OK, right. that's why that's why I always chose radio as my major medium. Uh, I, I had other friends in radio and they had bodies for radio, too. But, you know, they, they were like 300 pounds. And well, you know, you know the they, guys with the best voices always had three were 300 pounds. Yeah. You know, because they because they had this large rib cage. And that resonated. resonated, and they were they were great announcers. You Larry know. King has a great voice too. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. the, there was a time when I was a kid, when I was growing up in, in radio, in, 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 as a child, that I listened to radio all the time because it was the medium I grew up on, and uh, I would have this image of all the people you know that were on and what they looked like and from what they it sounded never matched like. When you saw and the and then all of a sudden, I would see a photograph in the paper of the guy, and I'd go. How does that voice come out of that guy? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then if I ever saw them somewhere and they started talking, I'd go, oh, okay, now I see the two match up. But, yeah. you know, I mean, I, uh, I remember coming to New York and my favorite show was a show on radio called Let's Pretend. And every week they would do a different fairy tale and dramatically. And I love the show. So my mother, as a surprise to me when we came to New York to see her parents, uh, got tickets to go see Let's Pretend. And so I yeah. sit there in the audience as a kid, and now all these people are coming out, and they're standing in front of a microphone reading scripts. And there's some guy over in the corner doing sound effects. And it just, none of it registered with me. It was the most horrible, disillusioning thing <laughs> I had ever seen in my life. They made no attempt, because it was an audience full of kids, after all. There was no attempt to play to those kids and to try and live up to that magic that they were creating on radio for that because they were all just radio people and they didn't care there was no visuals when when i was a kid uh, maybe four or five years old my mother took me to nbc studios yeah and and you know they showed you oh this is the way we make the sound of bacon uh, uh yeah, in the and pan they, they take, took some it, film and they and they and they crumple it up it, and that's cellophane. And, and, yeah. They still do that, the tour, right? They still do yeah, that. the tour. And uh, so I was impressed by that. And uh, the only other time was uh, my dad got me on the Sonny Fox show because he did his carpet. Yeah. And, one drama. One drama. Yeah, one drama. Sonny Fox. And uh, and that was interesting. You know, you're in the gallery there. He's still uh, alive doing uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Sonny Fox is still alive. Uh, yes, do-da, do-da. Yes, uh, Jeff. Oh, you never saw Sonny Fox. Mm -hmm. She didn't grow up in New York. Right. Jeff. Who? Well, yeah, I grew up. No, 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 Alex. He he don't know from Sonny Fox. Well. You know, you had know. to be a kid in New York uh, to see that. Yeah. It wasn't national. He had other And then kids. it was Bob McAllister after him, and he wasn't the same. He wasn't as good as yeah. Sonny Fox. But anyway, anyway. Uh, my... my my question is, uh, the gun smoke, when it was on radio, Yeah, uh, it's, it was a different guy. Bill Conrad was, a, yeah, was the announcer, and he was, a, he was about 250 pounds. He, was, he yeah. did not look like Matt Dillon. Matt Dillon, he looked right? more He looked more like uh, Orson Welles when Orson Welles got fat. Right. Yeah. Right. And he had a great voice. Yeah, he? But, he, but he was Matt Dillon. That, that yeah. You know. When it went to television, they weren't going to use him, even though he was an actor in a lot of movies. If you could watch a lot of old Warner yeah. Brothers movies, w William Conrad, he played uh, he played the fat detective on television. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cannon. Uh, Cannon. 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 Yeah. yeah. Cannon. Yeah. yeah. But he couldn't do he couldn't do Matt Dillon. You know, they, they had to go out. And you know who uh, they got was uh, what's his name? Uh, James Arness. And you know what? You, no, but you know what James Arness really did for a living? 
He was John Wayne's double. Wow. Ah. Yeah. And if you look at him, of course, he looks like John Wayne. You know, and if you if you put him on a horse and have him ride down the down the road a piece, he's you're not he's going to look just like John Wayne. And Peter Graves from Mission Impossible was his brother. That's right. That's correct. Yeah. He wow, did not cool. look like John Wayne, however. Uh, do you know what we're talking about, Patrick? He's the young guy in the group. You know what we're talking about, right? Yeah. Did you ever? You've seen Gunsmoke. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, I've seen Gunsmoke and, and that. You know that. Stuff you're talking about earlier, not mm -hmm. so much, but yeah, Gunsmoke. I, I watched that. No, I still watch it on one of their old people channels that I watch all the time. Nick so. at Night or something like that. Me TV know. or yeah. Me TV. Yeah. 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 What is that Me TV anyway? Uh, Channel 20, uh, KOFY does the Me TV. Yeah, but it's it's a thing that they take uh, 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 secondary stations in a market. Like, it comes in on Channel 3 on Fios here. And yeah. I'm going, these, these are really pretty bad shows. There's another, there's another channel, <laughs> if you want old stuff, that I love <coughs> called Decades. And right, De I like that De Decades has, uh, has the Dick Cavett show, which I really enjoy watching. Um, I love Dick Cavett. He was yeah. like an idol of mine. Yeah, and, <laughs> I and, loved him. And my wife used to work for him. Uh, Ronnie, yeah, my ex-wife, my former wife, used right. to work for him um, in producing that show. Uh, hey, I miss the doghouse. When you, Alex, when you were on KQED with a comedy show, yeah, I think it was in the eighties. Uh, I, I did a show. Access. It was na actually it was national. It was on PBS across the country. It was called Comedy oh, cool. Tonight. Yeah. Comedy Tonight. Yeah. Oh, that was a great show. I, 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 it was one of my favorite shows on KQD. And then after the show was off, we'd go to uh, the Public Access Channel, and it was this weird show called The Doghouse. I mean, this you got to Google it. Uh, I can't even describe this thing. It was so strange. Do the Doghouse on, uh, uh, you know, San Francisco Public Access TV. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, you know, I don't even know. I, didn't, I was talking to Jack last night and when I came back from the, the competition. and uh, Oh, you were he, cheating on me, huh? Yeah. And, and uh, well, I was excited that I, you know, took three first places. And, you know, so I, I, I couldn't wait to tell you, somebody. You knew you couldn't come here and get the same excitement out of me. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, <laughs> you know, I would go, so what are you doing? You eating those things? Uh, they, they, yeah. You know. So uh, anyway, we were talking about North Beach and so forth. And then he t said that he was a, j a jock on KMPX in yeah, San Francisco, yeah. which during the Summer of Love was the alternative uh, new kind of radio station. Right. And, then I, and I noticed that there was a guy on there named Tom Donahue. Who, uh, no, was he, a, he, he wasn't on KMPX. Yes, he was. He no. left on the 5th he, of he August, was, no. 1967. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't on KMPX. Uh no, it no, says Tom no. Donahue cracked open a microphone on KMPX Studio, 50 Green Street, uh, firing a uh, figurative shot that echoed across no, the... No, 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 no. He yeah, got May 5th, 1967. That's revisionist, because he actually went over to, K I think, KSAN and took over KSAN and, and, and put uh, um, the station on there. I don't think it was KMPX. KMPX, it, the whole format of KMPX was started, and I'm trying to remember the guy's name, I, by I this announcer know. who at, at midnight just said to the station, do you really care what I do here? And they went, no, nah, we don't give a shit. So he started well, playing alternative music, and that became so popular, it became, right. then Tom Don, you may have gone over to KMPX for a short time, but, well, uh, but uh, wait a minute, wait, but, but this other guy started it. Started the whole Jack thing. said he left the day Tom Donahue came on. Yeah. And so, yeah, well, anyway, and, then Tom Donahue left and took the whole. Donahue, but, the but no, I'm I trying have. to tell you the story. They t I think he okay. took the whole crew from KMPX over right. to KSAN. And then he right. ran the roost over there. Uh, now, is that the same Tom Donahue, your first wife? No, that was Troy Donahue. Troy Donahue. Tom Donahue. Oh, Troy Donahue. Okay. Same. He's got same, a Don, Don same Don Don no, that's, that's why I was wondering if that was the same, you know, but Troy. There's okay. a difference between Troy Donahue, who was a heartthrob in the movies in the, uh, in the, in the 60s, and yeah, Tom like, Donahue, like who weighed 400 <laughs> fucking pounds. And then yeah, one okay. night he was so drunk, he passed out on my girlfriend's bed, and we had to literally pick him up and take him to the door. All right? 
<laughs> now, how did you do that without a crane? It, 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 believe me, I think I still have a torn vertebrae or something from that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just thought that was very. You see, I, I didn't. I wasn't here for in the, in the summer of love. I was about yeah. four years too young. And uh, so I moved here in 70, the end of 73, beginning of 74. And uh, well, you see, know, here's, I, what, this, here's what happened. OK. Yeah. Um, and, and it could be that Donnie went over to KMPX for a short time, but then he went over and took over, I think, KSAN. Uh, yeah. And I remember uh, KMPX was owned by a guy by the name of Lee Crosby, who I used to work with at KTIM in San Rafael when he was country Lee Crosby. And we used to nickname him Cunt. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, he had a country and western show, and then he bought a radio station, and you know it, it became very popular because they were doing that kind of music. But then uh, uh, Tom Donahue, who created the dissension, took the staff he wanted and moved them over to another station. But the thing was about Tom Donahue, there were two, there were uh, there were a couple of jocks, Tom Donahue and Bob Mitchell, who were probably the two best disc jockeys I ever heard in my life. All right. I mean, disc jockeys, not talk show hosts, not radio personalities, disc jockeys. Uh, yeah. And there were a few other people over at KYA in San Francisco, uh, a guy by the name of Peter Tripp. Uh, I'm sure I remember who another guy was over there as well. But what, where they got them, what happened was the, uh, the station KYA didn't have any kind of real good staff. They want to go to, you know, play, start playing rock and roll and stuff, and they didn't have good disc jockeys. And then they heard about all these guys out on the East Coast who were losing their jobs because they were accused of taking payola. Mm -hmm. So they offered them a job. And so Donahue was like, had been fired for payola. Bob Mitchell had been fired payola. And they all went to KYA in San Francisco. So these big payola guys are sitting there in San Francisco, probably doing the same fucking thing they were doing out on the East Coast. You know. Yeah. But uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, he, he then went. But he did not come up with the format. Oh. And he, well, he a revisionist <laughs> history is that he did because he kept promoting that. I see. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I, I, since I haven't was... gotten a call from Jack yet about this. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat right on this. Uh, deal. <laughs> well, here he's coming online now. He's probably going to okay. call. He probably can remember who the guy was that actually started playing alternative music on KMPX. It was Jack. Huh? <laughs> it was Jack. <laughs> it might have been Jack. You know. Yeah. I mean, he was there close to the beginning. Uh, I bet. I bet. He, I bet he's. I bet he's going to call. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. waiting for it. Uh, but he's he's probably the only authority here that we've got because I wasn't there either. I was yeah. already here on the uh, where was I? I was I think it was in Houston, Texas when that whole thing started. By the time it really had ginned up, I was already in New York, uh, and uh, it was a whole different scene here in New York. You know, I mean, uh, in New York and San Francisco, and it's like never the twain shall meet. I never even knew the hate Ashbury thing. You know, because yeah. I was here in New York, and it was a whole different thing. Well, here we go. Here, here, here comes Jack. Uh, Jack, correct, co correct me on history, okay? Jack, are you there? Is this the living legend? Yes, it is. But uh, uh, we want you to clear, up, clear this, up this history. This history. We're talking, We're talking about your game. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's. Wait a minute. Stop. Hold on a second. There's slapback going on. Okay, now it's fine. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, you know uh, I got to say, I have only waited 50 years for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I was glad to start it. <laughs> I have only waited 50 years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to kind of fill you in on this part of the story that I know, Alex is absolutely right. Uh, Lee Crosby bought this FM radio station and uh, I had gotten fired from one of the R&B stations because back then, if you were black, you worked in black radio, yeah. more than likely. I only knew two guys at that time that didn't. Yeah. Um, Somebody said it was on the other end of the dial one night there, the black stations, right? No, no. Uh, uh, KDIA. AM, AM dial. KDIA was at 1310. Yeah. The station that I was at, K. S.O.L. Right, K.S.O.L. Who had a young guy named Sly Stone also. Yeah. Uh, we were at 1450. 
Well, I get fired because one of the other disc jockeys had a girl in the studio one night, and I dropped by to take a pee before driving down the peninsula to, to see a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And the owner came in also to take a pee, and he assumed the girl was with me because she was black, huh? and the jock that was on the air was white. Okay. And, and, and perish the thought that some white guy would screw this black groupie that would show up. Mm -hmm. So I knew the program director of KMPX, a guy named Bob Postel. Right. And, uh, I know that name. You know, I told him that I was looking for a, a gig. And he says, well, hey, we got something. Come on over here and uh, do... Okay, but now, since we don't have that much time, I want to get to the main part of the story. All right. Not, not about Sorry, how you got part. hired, which I think is an interesting okay. story in and of itself. All right, but there was a guy named... Uh, who was I, the guy? He did it at midnight. Yeah. And but he was, was the guy that I, literally invented alternative radio. No, no. No. Uh, you're thinking of Larry Miller. I'm thinking of Larry Miller. That's what I'm thinking Larry of. Larry Miller did not invent it. Here's what happened. There was a okay. guy named uh, uh, who was doing overnights who was a big R&B fan. Mm -hmm. And he was excited that I was over there. And I said to him, look, you got two, you know, two major R&B stations in the market. If you want to make some noise, you got to do something else. You know, I don't know what to do. And I said, well, you know, I'm going to state at that time. State College. Yeah. And I said, you know, people on campus are listening to Dylan and the Beatles and the Birds. And 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 I said, I got some albums. I'll give them to you. And you start playing them. And I can't think of the guy's name. He just gotten out of the Air okay, Force. Okay, but I always heard that Larry Miller is the guy that made it popular. Now, then. Now, Larry Miller is the guy that made it popular. Uh-huh. Okay. And um, it's albums. <laughs> yeah, and and I was doing mornings by then, and I and Larry and myself talked Crosby into letting him do what it, what he was already doing, and for me to do six to ten, mm -hmm. doing the same thing. Okay, and now how quickly? How did how did Donna you get into all of that? All right, real simple. Uh, one day I'm getting off from the six to ten shift. Donahue is in the lobby. Uh, the sales manager, a guy named Ron Hunt, said to me, "Hey." Do you know this guy, Tom Donahue? And I said, yeah, he's one of the biggest jocks in this town. And he had retired. He allegedly, he, he had promoted the no, last I, four Beatle concerts yeah, in America. Yep. Had a shitload of money. Yep. But I think and, also, I think he quit KYA in a dispute over pay and so on. Uh, well, it's all I knew. He and Bob Mitchell. Was, he quit YA the night after... The, uh, the Beatles played in L.A., and uh, he came in. Also, by the way, those concerts were produced not only by Don, by Donahue, but by Bob but Mitchell by, as well. By, by, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because Mitchell and Donahue weren't just friends. They were business partners. Right. And uh, Donahue came in to YA the night after the L.A. concert mm -hmm. and said, is only he could say, and I wish I could imitate his voice because it was one of the greatest voices ever in radio. These guys were great jocks. They were just yeah. great jocks. Yeah. He said, it has dawned on me that I am fabulously wealthy. <laughs> and he said to Well, he still had a lot of that payola money from the East Coast, too. Oh, oh, yes. And he said to, he said to uh, his engineer, because they had engineers at YA, mm -hmm. play a record. I'm going home and walked out. <laughs> and was off the air for a year and as you said donahue weighed about 400 pounds i got stoned with him and some guys from the uh, grateful dead one night up in marin yeah. and donahue started crying like a baby telling everybody oh i'm a i'm an awful person and wanted to turn himself into uh, the police and we had to restrain him and if you were trying to restrain a strong 400-pound uh, man... I, believe me, I tried, to, I tried to literally... had to get that guy off of my girlfriend's bed so we could use it. And I he was passed wondered, out. He was passed would, out. Stone cold I fucking... I wondered drunk. how he and Rachel did it. R Rachel was his wife, and she was a very attractive yeah. woman. Yes. And Which small was, and petite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She had to be on top all the time, because he would have killed her otherwise. Well, anyway... Uh, he shows up at the radio station, 
he gets into a meeting with um, uh, Ron Hunt and Lee Crosby, and I'm hanging around because I, you know. Okay, I speed this thing up because, you, you know. So they come out of the meeting, and, and they, they asked me, do you think this guy could do for us what he says he can do? I said, if he can't do it, nobody else can because he's got all the great contacts. And that was the story. Now, I had already turned in my resignation to go to Houston because mm -hmm. I wanted to be a program director, plus I wanted to buy a new car. And they were only paying So you left, you left, basically you left at the wrong time. I, you know, the story of my life, I've either stayed too long or yeah. left too now, soon. Am I right? He, he, he then took everybody out of there, made them go on strike against Crosby and took them over to Casey, yeah. right? Yeah, about six months later. Yeah. He t you know, he, uh, he yeah. took him but, to... But uh, by no means did uh, Tom Donahue invent alternative yeah, radio. Yeah. But, he, but they, he told everybody he did. When well, you know, there's, there are a couple of guys walking around the country saying, I did, and I said, my idea was based on what I was reading about in the trades yeah. about WOR FM in New York and what Scott Muni and uh oh bill uh, uh roscoe were doing bill 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 uh, uh mercer. mercer yeah yeah and i'm just reading about this and and it sounds like a good idea to me because as you and i know there are no new ideas in this okay. business well i don't want to bore people with old radio stories but this is an interesting one because it was how that whole that whole thing of alternative uh rock progressive rock radio yeah. came it came yeah. into being did anybody you find this interesting guys i am sorry we took I do, but I I live here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, I know a lot of the players uh, that it's second generation now. You know, like yeah. David, uh, who who worked for Bill Graham, and uh, yeah, and 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 Jim Marshall, uh, who mm -hmm. was a tour of mine for photography wise, who uh, uh, photographed the last Beatles concert at Candlestick Park, and he had exclusive. It uh, was Candlestick Park. It was uh, at the Cow Palace. Cal Really? I thought it was yeah. Candlestick Park. Nah, Cal Palace. You well, know, here's more, more something, just a quick side side here, thing here, because we have to get going off anyway in a moment. Uh, but uh, when we say the name the Cow Palace, forget <laughs> about guys in California. What does that engender? What kind of image does that engender when I say, oh, they, the Beatles played the Cow Palace? <laughs> because, uh, I, because when I was a like kid... Texas, yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, uh, Patrick? Sound like something that should come out of Wisconsin. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Texas, man. Texas. Or Texas or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. said, yeah. when I was a kid, I said, that's a really stupid name for a place. Because we just said, oh, we're going to the Cow Palace. We're going to see a show at the Cow Palace. And I went, they should change it. Give it a, 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 a decent name. Use the French and call it the Palais du Vache. You know, it looks like a giant uh, a hangar or a yeah, uh, yeah, hut. Like, hey, I, I you know, know uh, you got to get going here, ja uh, Jack. Otherwise, you're yeah. not going to get on right after us. But thank well, you. Well, this was, uh, like I said, I've waited 50 years to hear this conversation. <laughs> okay, thank you well, to be a part of you it. You had to hear it on my show. Thanks. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye. Uh, Jack's on next with uh, with Amy. But, um, um, yeah, the Palais du Vache. I always, I always felt when I tell people, hey, we're going to the Cow Palace, they'd go like, what? 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 The Cow Palace? And I'd say, yeah. They did the Republican what? National Convention My, I worked the Repo Eisenhower. Uh, I, yes, I worked that for CBS. I was a page boy. Wow. wow. That was the first time I ever saw it. Yeah. That was, yeah. Uh, that was the Cow I Palace as well. I saw a rodeo there. Huh? Uh, my uh, ex-wife and kids, we all went to a rodeo. Well, hopefully you would see a rodeo at the Cow Palace. Cow Palace. You know, I, I mean, the, the, what and else would be on, go on in the Cow Palace but a rodeo? We've got to yeah. get going here. Thank you, Phil, very much. Good show tonight, by the way. Uh, and, and, and of course, uh, Johnny, thank you. Uh, uh, I, Patrick, always, always a pleasure to see the, the man who keeps us honest. Uh, and, of course, uh, Charlene, thank you. And Jeff, wonderful. <laughs> you aren't, are you, are you in Florida? No, no, no. Oh, 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 because you're in a different room tonight, and I, you know. I, you know, just switched 90 degrees. Yeah. That's oh, all. you know who I talked to today, and I guess I'll talk about it maybe tomorrow. I talked to uh, Albert. Uh, he's living oh, down right. in Florida now, and I talked to him today, and I'll tell you all about it. 
Anyway, mm-hmm. hey, listen, I got to go. Uh, everybody, why don't you wave a big wave goodbye so these people can uh, can see your happy faces and remember them. And I hope we'll see you all again tomorrow night. I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for the Citizens Panel uh, as I hang up on them and get this all ready so the next show can use the, the Skype lines. Uh, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back again. Uh, to, to, let's see here. Um, tomorrow night... Uh, well, next is Jack Bishop and Amy Manuel and the intersection. And right after that is Connections at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it'll be daylight starting next week. And then uh, let's see here. Oh, then tomorrow night at uh, 9.30, Damien is here with the exchange. And I will be here at 10 o'clock with the ramble. In the meantime, I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. And as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.